there's a blue Jeep Cherokee, like an older body style. He's swerving all over the curb, speeding crazy. He's definitely drunk. And I have a feeling he's about to run into somebody because there's a bunch of cars up ahead. A young woman with the whole world at her feet. It seemed that nothing could stop her. Like he's for sure, for sure drunk. How long have you been behind him? Beautiful and smart, with a loving family and endless opportunities. Well, he's about to crash. He's pretty much... He just crashed. There's a real, real, a okay. real bad wreck. Don't be worried. What he hit, sir? I'm, okay, he hit. He came and he hit a taxi cab on the cross. Get the hazard right. Tell yeah. me where you. Listen to me. Slow okay. down. Where are you right now? But then, everything changed. This person is definitely hurt. The, their head went through the windshield and this uh and the chair. Okay. Is he conscious? Uh, they're they're breathing, but they're not moving. I mean, you can tell that they're breathing, but they're not moving. I mean, it's, it's real, 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 for real bad. She was a kid that would um, go barefoot down, knocking on doors down the street and just, you know, talking to grown-ups, talking to kids. A life cut short, dreams shattered. Okay, okay, okay. tell them the paramedics are and the police are on the way. The police are on the way, man. We'll never be the same. Each year, over 40,000 people are killed in car crashes involving alcohol. That's roughly one person dying every 15 minutes. And even more are injured. Four million people visit emergency rooms every year because of car crashes involving alcohol. So tell me, how many people do we have still unconscious? Um, there's still gonna be quite person a few. in the Jeep. We got one, um, two, three. I think it's, right about now, I think it's three. What happened to the young woman? Who was to blame for the terrible wreck? How fast was he going? The Jeep? You talking about the Jeep? Which car? The Jeep is the one that was driving crazy. But how fast was he going? Probably like, that, how fast did you say that was on 70 maybe? He had to be going at least 50. I want, I don't want to say more than 50, but she was going definitely 50. That's a female in the Jeep? Uh, I think so, I can't see the face. I mean, I can't, that's the one that slumped over, I can't see her face. She was unconscious. Her face had gone through the windshield. When she woke up, Jamie couldn't believe what she'd done. I couldn't open my eyes when I was coming around and I was laying on the ground. They had just pulled me out and I heard them say, oh, he's dead. It felt like a bad dream. Because I was still drunk, you know. I was still, I was still pretty, pretty drunk. And, um... They said, no, he's, and I, said, I said, is he okay? And they said, no, ma'am, there's, there's a man that's dead. Jamie's drinking started with a few nights out with friends, but quickly turned into a daily routine. And now, instead of opportunity and promise, she faces years in prison, a life labeled as a felon, and the guilt of knowing the pain she has caused. What's real hard to swallow is that I deserve this. You know, that, that still gets hard because it's like, Everything, all the bad things that have happened to me, I deserve them because of what I did. And it's, it's paying for my crime. Why do you think many young people take risks like Jamie did? To me personally, you know, I don't find any, you know, fun in it. I mean, I, it just doesn't appeal to me. It just messed my life up. Like, I can't even really explain. I don't drink myself. My friends know that. The difference between teens who drink and those who don't has a lot to do with the choices they've made before they were anywhere near alcohol. The important thing in that situation, which is an extremely difficult situation, is to know before you go to a party, how you're going to handle that situation. Because it is, if you haven't practiced or thought out in advance what you're going to do, it's really hard at that moment. And, and you actually have to almost rehearse in your mind, you know, I'm going to be assertive. And those rehearsals really make a difference when you're in a situation that tests you. Brothers Reed and Blaze are only 15, 
but they're in a band that plays in clubs and bars. They look like rock stars, and some people assume they act like them too. Yeah, people just automatically assume that we do drugs and drink and do all sorts of bad things, but um, we're really not like that at all. Being around an older crowd, they've seen how alcohol can affect people, and they know that alcohol is illegal at their age. These facts help them decide to stay away from alcohol. Not appealing. Looks stupid anyway. And why would you want to, like, why would you want to look stupid and not have control of yourself? What do they do when someone offers them a drink? They ask. I mean, all you have to say is, no, man, it's fine. And they're like, all right, cool. People who know them well know where they stand. They don't even offer anymore. Once you say no the first time, the brothers say, everything is easier. I mean, people just accept it and just don't talk to us about it. They just don't, they don't ask us about stuff like that anyway. They know that we don't do anything, so they don't try to include us. These guys know who they are and what they will and will not do. If they didn't know, if they weren't prepared, saying no might be a lot harder. When you're, you're not really um, prepared for an answer or for a uh, rebuttal or, or just getting the heck out of there, you might stay or you might you know, consider doing something that you would never consider otherwise. Saying no when you feel like other people are pressuring you is a skill that takes practice. And uh, it's great to have a number of different ways to say it that make you comfortable. Um, it always worked for me personally to be able to say, oh my gosh, no, my mom will kill me, you know, or the delay technique of, of just saying, listen, um, I can't tonight, okay, I gotta babysit my sister. Do your own thing, yeah, do your own thing, if, it, if you, uh, I mean, people respect that anyway, you know, yeah. if you, uh, that one's the same, yeah. there's nothing special about you, you don't have any self-pride or anything, when you're doing your own thing, you, it's different. You feel cool. You don't need your friends to tell you you're cool because you already feel cool. And deep down, teenagers know that they don't have to drink to fit in and have friends. If you say to them, do you think that if you yourself didn't drink that you would not be popular? When they're honest with you, most of them would say, actually, no, I think that, 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 I, that my true friends, the people who really are my friends, would still be my friends. I could go to a party and not drink and, and still be accepted. I mean, I don't struggle with it. I mean, if you, you want to drink, no. <laughs> Plain as that. I don't drink. So, you know, you give me a glass of water, give me some orange juice, and I'll drink my glass of water, and I'll drink my orange juice. There's a lot of teenagers that have fun without alcohol, and, you know, they just need to realize that you don't need to get into bad things to have fun. There's so many other ways that you can have fun. But how can you make the right choice when you're at a party and you feel pressured to make a decision? I mean, if you're in that kind of environment, the best, best thing to do is let yourself breathe for a minute so you can think on your own and have other people doing your thoughts for you. Like it's somebody telling you the right thing to do. You know, you know what to do. You honestly know what the right thing to do is. Like I see alcohol and I see my friends handing it to me and I'm like, don't even bother. It doesn't even interest me because I see the repercussions of that and I see the pain that it causes. So to me, it's not a question of, oh, I don't want to be grounded or I would like a car next weekend. It's, I don't want my life to have that in it. But even if you're firm in your decision to refuse to drink, alcohol can still affect your life. Alcohol actually kills 6.5 times more youth than all other illicit drugs combined. Other people's drinking can put you in danger. There have been instances where I've been at a party and I had to like arrange rides for people like I'd have to be like no you can't drive your car you have to go with them instead and then I have to tell that person to take them home. I drove a friend home once and it, it was a brand new car and I actually I bought him for the keys. The next morning he called me and he was he was um, very apologetic and he was like thank you so much for doing that. Learning from past mistakes is part of growing up. Just because you've had a drink before doesn't mean you can't say no next time. Keegan learned that lesson after a personal tragedy. Despite her parents' warnings, she started drinking when she was 12. If you're told not to do something, that you're going to do it. That sort of rebel mentality ended quickly when a friend died in an alcohol-related crash. Nobody really ever gets over it. 
it's always, you know, someone says his name and just everybody's quiet. Because, you know, he died and, you know, he's not here anymore. This tragedy turned Keegan around. But why did it take something so horrible to make her see? It could be because she and a lot of other teens don't have the skills to say no. Just like anything else, just like learning math, you have to learn one plus one and then you get all the way up to calculus. Refusal skills are just not saying no is a skill and you have to learn bit by bit. My name's Keegan Thompson and I'm a junior. That's why Keegan is here talking to middle school students about avoiding alcohol. I think most of us have seen it all. We've seen from one sip of alcohol to the really harsh drugs. You see and you tell yourself, you know, I don't want to be like that. She's teaching middle school students what she wished she knew when she was 12. You know, once you say no, and if you say no, like, um, I guess not, you know, they're going to keep going at it. But if you say no and you mean it, they're not going to keep on going. She's giving them the skills they need. Be assertive. Say no like you mean it. Tell your friends you'd rather enjoy the party sober. Even blame it on your parents if you have to. Whatever it takes to keep yourself safe. You know, I, I like, you know, to perform an act called the cold shoulder. You know, it's like when somebody comes up to you and asks you, you know, like, would you like to, you know, have a cigarette or take a drink or, you know, I just, you know, just don't answer their question, walk right past them like they don't even exist. Each one of these kids has to decide for him or herself to say no and how to do it. I can tell them it's wrong, but it's all gonna come down to the decision that they're gonna make. So many people would, would be like, whatever, I'm gonna have fun. And someone else's turn to be the responsible one in the group. Someone else's turn. And it's it's just the, that one bad decision that, that, that literally is a deciding factor. It is never too late. It's never too late. Even if, even if you, have decided to try alcohol or drugs or anything, it's never too late to make another decision because, you know, in this moment right now, you can still make a decision about whether you will or will not do that. Jamie has spent a lot of time thinking about her decision to start drinking and to drink and drive. For the longest, I thought it was just an accident. It wasn't, and it wasn't on purpose. I didn't go out there and try to kill a man, but it did. And that's why she's telling her story. To tell teens, to tell everyone that it can happen to them. And they're thinking, oh, it's not supposed to happen to me either. I'm not gonna be like that girl in that video right there, you know? Like, yeah, you are. You are if you let yourself. You are if you start drinking and if you start, I mean, if you just don't, if you just don't even drink, you just you leave that out of your life, it's not going to happen, you know? You can't get in a DUI car accident if you don't drink. Kelly, the daughter of the man who died in the crash, has similar advice. Make the choice to say no to alcohol before you become one of the statistics. People in bars, if they see a person drunk, stop them, call them a cab, take their keys away. That's a major issue. And I just hope kids just don't drink and drive. Just don't make that decision at all. Because you will hurt more families drinking and driving than anything in the world. I'm still hurt over it. How will you say no to alcohol? How will you stick to your decision not to drink?